Quarter to two, Sunday afternoon. Everybody's round. Look at the table, look, what we got here? A leaf blower. Right, here's a McCulloch leaf blower. I don't know if you can see the, uh, that was the make of it in number. I picked this up from auction or probably a couple of years ago. And uh, because we've got the garden, it's in such a state with the leaves, as you, as you know. Gary went out and hired one, as you know. But as I said, I told you I had my own one, which is this one here. Now, I remember looking at this about two years ago when I bought it. And it had spark and it had fuel to it, but it wouldn't start. So I just put it to the side and left it. Never got around to do anything with it. Anyway, you had a look, Bert, didn't you? Had a quick look. What, what did you find? Give me a sore arm. <laughs> Kept pulling it over. So he had the same thing. He saw. He took it apart. That's what we did. But what I did, that was spark plug and fuel and, and, and compression. Just put it up, your thumb over the top of the spark plug, and we had compression. Well, anyway, this time I've decided, as you can see, to strip it completely down. You might see that it's sitting in a pile over here now. For the simple reason being, on this McCulloch. This is the. Um, let's put that back in there for a this is the actual cylinder. Now, what was happening was, as I say, that's the rotary bit where it turns the uh, big fan over, and this is obviously is the, the crankcase which is in there. If you actually undo them two screws there and pull that cover off, you can actually see the crank there. Now, what Gary found, uh, and I never looked looked this far into it. I did take that off before, but what he found was was that. Um, once you open that out, that's the crankcase. Now in a two-stroke, like a two-stroke motorcycle engine, this works exactly the same, where the fuel goes into the crankcase, and then it compresses and goes up the transfer ports into the barrel, and then gets compressed, and then as the piston goes down, it drags more air in and fuel, and fuel shorts out, shoots, uh, the, the burnt fuel shorts out the exhaust, and it sucks new fuel into the crankcase for it to um, uh, not only lubricate the crankshaft, because it's a two-stroke oil mix, but anyway, so cut a long story short, when he took that off, there was loads of fuel sitting in the bottom there. Now, they won't, that won't start. I've had the motorcycles that have had fuel in the crankcase, and they just won't start. So anyway, it's a matter of them finding out what, what's causing it to go into there. What can happen is that the carb can let pass sometimes, and that can let fuel into the actual crankcase area. And I've had this on motorcycles where the carbs have been letting by, and then they filled the crankcase up, and you'll never start the thing. But in this situation, there was nothing letting by. It was just purely fuel going in, and for some reason, it wasn't going out through the, the exhaust. It wasn't compressing, going through its cycle, basically, its two-stroke cycle. Anyway, once I've actually stripped the engine down, this, this thing comes with the barrel. Normally, you have a separate head, but it's just the barrel on this one, and the head of welded as one piece. But as you can see, look, I'm just lifting it up now. I've just taken the barrel off. But I don't know where you can see. That's the piston, but that is very, very loose. So when you take the barrel off and look into the barrel, I don't know if you can see it there, it's all scored and it's had some blow past as well, it's browned down the barrel. But if we look at the actual, let's get you nearer to this. This is the actual piston and the ring that goes obviously thousands and thousands of times up and down in this little two stroke engine. And I don't know whether you can see or not, but the actual piston ring is seized in the groove so what's probably happened as a result of that, as the piston's been going up and down, up and down, it started to perform quite bad, and it's probably due to carbon that's uh, built up on there, and got past the rings, and it's been stuck in the rings. And then what's happened is, is you've got blowback, or blow past driver, which shows on the side of the piston below the ring, which means that you're not getting a good compression anymore and you can see the score marks with the bits of carbon that have gone below and that means that the, the bore is, that's worn grooves in the bore so it all originated from probably a dodgy piston ring <coughs> with carbon making the ring stick in so you're not getting good compression and as you can see how easy that slides on look normally you have to pinch the ring look you see how you look so that is the problem now this I can't buy this in this country I've looked on a website in America, that is $32. Pistons 22 kit, uh, piston kit is 22 quid. But 
I'm never going to be able to repair this. It's got all of the parts from Erica, so that is now going to be redundant. So as I say, even though we had spark, we had fuel going to it, the telltale sign that, sign that there was something else wrong was obviously lack of compression and fuel buildup in the actual crank case. And lucky enough on this McCulloch, we can actually see the crank case by taking this little cover off, little plastic cover. So yeah, I mean, that's basically redundant. So in total, if I remember right, I think that cost me about 12 quid this uh, leaf blower about two years ago. So you win some, you lose some. Uh, in this case, all I've basically procured out of this is loads of screws of spares, uh, maybe a coil there. I've looked at, I'll keep that one probably. All the plastics and all that are not worth keeping. The engine's not worth keeping. So all I'm getting is like a list of spares, a load of spares off of it basically. So I found one of these at auctions again. You may remember I've done um, a video on the last one I found. And again, this is the same one. This is a Rotel RVC 240 uh, Citizens Band Radio from 1981. And again, I'll do exactly the same as I've done in the last uh, the video I've done on this. If you look in my playlist, you'll see the actual Rotel, exactly the same one what I've done. So again, I picked it up, picked this up for four pounds at auction, and I think they sell for about 30 or 35 quid or whatever. And all I'm going to do basically is give it a coat of paint. So yeah, that's it. So that's another little thing I've got. I missed one yesterday at auction. You may remember in one of my other videos, we've got a Goblin Tees made, one from the 60s and the 70s, no, 1970s I think it was. And that was at auction. Anyway, I was doing something else, I think we fell asleep or something in the afternoon, and I missed it, and it went for five pounds. So, on eBay at the moment, they're selling for about 45 pounds. So again, you may not think that's a lot of money, but if you do them three or four times a, day, a, a week, 45 pounds or 40 pound profit for example 30 pound profit on that before you know it, you've got an extra 150 200 quid coming in and that's only from <laughs> what <laughs> oh god so when i talk a lot jimmy sometimes I'm... yeah try stay see the word even jimmy yeah, he's having a pop as well <laughs> i forgot what i was saying now <laughs> what was i saying make you can make an easy 200 pounds we was on uh, Facebook the other day. Gary pointed me, he pointed, uh, messaged me and said, uh, hey, oh, there's a little Honda, what was it, a Honda Melody, Gary? Yeah. Little Honda Melody moped. Someone wanted 80 pounds for it, just to get rid of it that day. It had, it had a logbook with it. It had um, the, the, the key with it, obviously, logbook and key, didn't have tax or MOT. But Jimmy laughed at me. He said, what do you want that for? 80 pounds. I said, well, in actual fact, Jimmy, I said, I've offered 70 pounds and they're possibly going to let me pick it up within, like, a couple of hours or whatever. No, he said, you'll never repair it, he said. You'll never repair it. I said, Jim, it's not for me. I'll buy it. I said, because I know I can find someone else who wants a little project to do over winter. You know, they want to repair whatever. They've got a little shed or whatever and they want to tinker about with something over the winter period just to restore or just to, you know, get something to do as a hobby. So I was just going to bring it home, put it in the back of the van, not even do any work to it, and then just re-advertise it again for double the price. I could have got double the money for that easy, no problem at all. And I emailed the woman, she said, oh, I've got 10 people watching it at the moment. I couldn't let it go for no more than, uh, no less than 80, what I asked for it. So I just let it go. But what I'm saying to you is, all I would have had to have done was put it in the back of the van, come home, and maybe just give it a wipe over, take some nice pictures of it, and maybe a little video, and advertised it on eBay, telling people that this will make someone a nice winter project. You know, you sell it to them, make it, make them, there's people out there who are on eBay looking for little things, winter project, you put that in the title, winter project, because people do type in winter project, or spares or repair. Write that in the title, because a lot of people who are into buying stuff to do up to, as a hobby, they, they want things that are broken. And you type in, you type, you put in your title, spares or repair. So I could have just brought that for 80 pounds if I would have, wanted to pay the extra tenner, which I probably would have done, but it was a Saturday evening, I was nice and comfy and I didn't really need it anyway, so. But what I'm saying to you is, these are sort of things where you've got to look at it from a different perspective. It's not saying I wanted to repair, as Jimmy thought, he thought I was gonna to have to uh, do it. He said, you'll never do the work on it. I says, let me educate you, Jimmy. It's not about me doing the work. It's about me putting it in front of a market or an army of people who are going to do the work. What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> So Jim is standing behind me now, as you can see. Look, where's he gone? Oh, he's gone, look. He knows Daddy's right, yeah? So yeah, on this one, I've lost 12 quid, I don't care, I'm not really bothered. There he is, look. He's got his Andy Pandy unit on, that's why he keeps Andy Pandy 
outfit. Boy, was it a onesie? I should be doing this on the table already. There he goes, look. I shouldn't really be doing this on the table already, but it's all going in the bin now. It's only that it's very cold outside and uh, just tink like me, I'm just tinkering, I'm just tinkering about. Just tinkering about, so I'm gonna clear the table now anyway and we're gonna have uh, oh, I'll go down the altar. Are you coming down? Yeah. Hey? Stacey the car. Yeah, Stacey's nicked the car off him now, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, look, look at Jimmy, look, he's got that blinking. Kids, look. Let me try and zoom in, look. Look, Andy Pandy outfit he's got on, look. Jimmy, look, Andy Pandy outfit, show the people it. What? Show the people your Andy Pandy outfit. You Stand up. Now turn and face daddy. Right, now jump up and down like a, ro like a, ro a rabbit. <laughs> oh well, there we go. Right, that's just a little Sunday afternoon vlog, so I say we're going to go down the auction, me and Gary, and uh, I'll throw the slot away and then we come back and have some dinner. Anyway, see you later.